Good morning, grade fours. I hope you are well. Today we are going to be doing math, so I want you to get your math textbook as well as your workbook ready for me. Okay, now let's start with activity 13.5. So this is a really easy activity. It's just adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing different measurements. Okay, now just a quick reminder that the units of the measurements always need to be the same. So you can only plus a kilometer to a kilometer, a meter to a meter, and a centimeter to a meter. That uh, is for adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. Okay, so in this case, in this activity, um, the units are the same, luckily, so it's just basic sums. So we look at the first one, 26 kilometers plus 78 kilometers, which will just equal 104. Then we have the second one, which is uh, subtracting 78 centimeters minus 24 centimeters equals 54 centimeters. And then you have multiplication and division. Now we look at exercise 13.6 on page 73. Now this is converting measurements. Now you need to memorize um, for a test that there is 10 millimeters in 1 centimeter, 100 centimeters in 1 meter, and 1000 meters in 1 kilometer. That is something that you need to memorize in order to be able to answer questions in a test. Okay, so I did a couple of them with you. So the first one they asked you 1 meter equals how many centimeters? So um, that is easy because you memorize that 100 centimeters equals 1 meter. So there's no sums needed. So, and then I did a number three with you, which is half a centimeter equals how many millimeters? Now, what you know, what you memorize is that one centimeter equals 10 millimeters, okay? So what you do on the one equal uh, side, you have to do on the other equal side. So we have one centimeter equals 10 millimeters. Now we have a half a centimeter. Now that means we divided it by two. So then you're gonna divide the other side um, after the equals, also by two. So you divided one centimeter by two, which g gave you a half a centimeter, which they gave you. Now you're going to divide the other side, so it's 10 millimeters divided by two, which is five. So the answer is five millimeters. I'm going to do another one with you. Number five, we have two kilometers equals how many meters, right? So we have uh, one kilometer on the one side and then we don't know what the meters is yet but what we already know what we memorized is there's one kilometer in a thousand meters so what did we do with the one kilometer to make it two kilometers we times it by two so then you times it by two but when you times the one side um, of the equation um, after the equal sign, you have to times the other side with 2 as well. So whether whatever you do, you need to do the same on both sides to get the answer. So 1 times 2 is 2 kilometers. Then 1,000 times 2 is 2,000 meters. So there's your answer. Let's do another one together, number 7. So we have 15 meters equals how many centimeters? Now, what did we memorize? We memorized that there's 1 meter uh, for every 100 centimeters. That is what we memorized. But now we have 15 meters. So what did we do with the 1 meter to make it 15 meters? We times it by 15. Okay, so then it's 1 times 15. But now we have to do the same with the other side. Now we're going to say 100 times 15. So 15 meters equals 1,500 centimeters. Now you can do the rest of the um, sums that I did not do with you and then try this method out. Okay, now you're going to do exercise 13.7. Now I'm not going to do an example with you because you only have to do the first three of that exercise. So number one, two, and three. It's pretty simple. It's word sums and you just need to figure out what the sum is and then show your work. Okay, now we're going to have a look at 3D objects. So let's look at the keywords. 3D dimensional objects or 3D objects is an object that has length, width, and height. So in the first term, you learned about 2D shapes. So they are flat and they only have two dimensions, length and width. So an object that has three um, dimensions, length, width, and height, is called a three-dimensional object or a 3D object for short. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, now we're going to look at exercise 14.1 on page 76. Now you get different names for 2D and 3D shapes. So you can have a look there. You get a triangle, a rectangle, a circle, octagon, square, pentagon, hexagon, and a semicircle in 2D shapes. You can see that they are just flat shapes. But 3D shapes look a bit different. So you get a cube, a cuboid, a cone, a cylinder, a sphere, and a prism. Now... At exercise 14.1, you're basically going to just identify different 2D and 3D objects. So you're going to say whether they are 2D and 3D. And then you're going to have a look around you in your house where you are sitting right now for 2D and 3D shapes. Okay, now we're going to look at exercise 14.2 on page 77. Now there is a table at the top A, B and C. In A there is shapes with curved surfaces, for example a sphere. Now a sphere is a 3D circle, right? Then in column B we have flat and curved surfaces, for example a cylinder and a cone. So it has a flat surface and a curved surface. In um, column C, we only have flat surfaces, so 3D shapes that only has flat surfaces. Now, at number 1, you need to place all of those um, 3D shapes into A, B or C. So you're going to look at their characteristics and then you're going to say whether they belong in column A, B or C. Then at number 2 um, is a couple of examples of 3D shapes in everyday life and then you need to match them with some of the shapes in question one. So you're going to identify their names. So the first one is a can, right? Now what shape does a can have? It has a cylinder shape, okay? And then so on. Okay, now let's have a look at exercise 14.3 on page 78. Now, this is a really easy activity. You're basically just going to name the different 3D objects, okay, and talk about their characteristics. So, the different types you get is a cylinder, a cube, a rectangular prism, a sphere, a square-based pyramid, and a cone. Okay, now in all of the questions, you're basically just going to identify them, what do you notice about them, and sort of their characteristics, okay. Okay, now the last exercise, exercise 14.4 on page uh, 79, is basically you have to look at a prism, a rectangular prism, and a pyramid. Okay, and then you have to answer questions. Now, the easiest way for you to answer these questions is by actually making a 3D model of each of these shapes. Now, I have a picture here to show you just an example how to make them, and you can try and make them yourself. Um, or you can use the images in the book to actually answer the questions. So it's pretty simple and easy, just how many faces does they have, uh, what shape is this uh, face, so that is what is the 2D, 2D shape's name, and then what is the base shape and things like that. I think it's pretty easy. Then lastly, you have a revision test that I've sent on WhatsApp that you have to please complete. And then if you have any questions, feel free to WhatsApp me at any time. Or you can leave your questions for our Zoom sessions. Bye.